Hey guys, it's your girl Isha, at Kate Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Hell's Paradise. We're now on to episode three of the first season already, and that episode is called Weakness and Strength. So the second episode was just as solid as the premiere, in my opinion. We got to see some more of the characters we're gonna be interacting with throughout the season, some of the other baddies. We learned that quite a few of them actually have special abilities or superpowers as well. So things are gonna get very interesting when they get to this island for sure. And I feel like it's not gonna be just against whatever's on the island, but I feel like there's definitely gonna be some more battles between some of our inmates. But for now, their main objective is just to get to this island alive. We are also uh, introduced to some more of Gabi Maru's abilities. This kid is insane. And we see that he's actually, again, a bit, a bit of a thinker, which I think no one expects from him. Like when they hear, a term like Gabby Maru the hollow. I think everyone assumes that he's hollow up here too, but he's actually pretty smart and he's quite deep. And he saw that he actually tried to stop the carnage in the yard last episode, but it didn't go well. And he ended up showing everybody once again, why he's called what he's called. So we ended the episode with them on the boat, on the way to paradise with who's left of the yard carnage. And uh, yeah, I think we start to get into the meat and potatoes of what's actually behind this island that's kind of been built up to be this utopia that has teeth. Let's put it that way. So I'm looking forward to getting into the episode. Let's jump in. But before we do, if it's your first time on my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I do reactions to animes and a lot of other shows. So if you are interested in watching me go through this journey and a lot of the other ones I watch, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button as well as the uh, notification bell. That way you'll know when I do more uploads. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it very, very much if you gave some love to the like button. Every time you hit the like button, one Gabby Maru um, gets his wings. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. I'm just kidding. But yes, I'd appreciate it so very, very much. And for those of you who've been here before, thank you so much for coming. Welcome back. Thank you so much for your patience and all your support. And if you have not joined the gang yet, please go ahead and do so today. I'd love to have you as part of it. All right, that out of the way, guys. Let's get into episode three right about now. Ooh. Oh. Mask? All terrifying. Oh, they want you dead. Oh, those be your bowels. And arrows? Who did you anger? Uh-oh. That's not the response we expected. That's the devil. Oh, that's what they're all after. That's terrifying, by the way. I hope they found a way to bury him under like a thousand pounds of rock. She's like, you could have volunteered that information earlier. <laughs> I mean, this place looks like it's a trip. If nothing else, you're going to be high the entire time. <laughs> what if the real treasure of this island is actually opium? You won't live forever, but you'll feel like you did. Really? You're gonna keep their hounds bound the entire... Okay. Even though you know he doesn't need his hands. Don't touch anything. That's probably what half y'all do. They're right. He's like a little too shiny. Yeah, he's like enough of pretending. Too late. I broke them. Yeah, they clearly think we're gonna die. Oh, he's like, oh, it's just because yeah, well, you're worrying about his hands being bound. <laughs> He's like, that was awkward. Yeah, that's usually death, sir. That's breaking an... Fell in love with... Do I want to know that story? I don't. Yeah, no, y'all, mm -mm, that's a fetish I don't need to know more about. Yeah! Doesn't it? 
Period. Precisely. Choose your battles. <laughs> oh, no, no. Please tell us what her rank is. He's like, but this is more interesting. I want to hear about the drama between the Sagiris, or between the Isomons. Dude. I really don't want to get involved in whatever this weird sex thing is you got going on. Thank you! It's very obvious! Like, you and your tools can go off on a corner somewhere and leave me alone. Was that the reason? You remember what happened the last time you said that, sir? What?! Me and this chick are gonna fight. But it is funny. She's like, really? I'm saying this because I'm mad that you heard that I'm lowest ranked. <laughs> she petty. I like it. He's not have time for you, bitch. Oh, there goes all your toys. Or should I say your lovers? See, now you and your toys can be together forever. Did that get you off? Nice face! <laughs> That's not fair though. If the other guy doesn't have his hands bound, then why does his hands have to be bound? That's unfair. The guy, yep, see? Look at him smiling. He's never been happier or hornier in his life. Right, my hands are tied. Right, he's like, peace out. I'm gonna have dinner tonight at home. Mm -hmm. Right? He's like, this whole place is kind of human. I got blood on my shoe. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, like, really? You're only alive because he's letting you be alive. He, he, he could kill you already. She's looking at him like an actual meal. Ew! I was about to say, did you not understand what he said about the fact that he said that no one cares? They don't live by rules. That's very true. You can try. Right? You couldn't kill me if you tried, bro. Remember you said about going home to take your bath? Remember your place. Mm. It's getting dark and you look scared. Hi! So we don't talk. And he don't, we still didn't get to see his face. Okay. Yeah. Oh, did we lose him so soon? Oh, you ate him. Oh, that's how it's gonna be in here, huh? Okay! He's a cannibal, too. You nasty man! You used her, then killed her? Interesting. Look at the plot thickening! Yeah. Or around your fellow... Your fellow swordsman. <laughs> I mean, weren't you the one who just said like five minutes ago we ain't friends? Now you're like, oh, he would dare kill me? Wow, okay. So that's why that trauma is still firmly planted in his brain, huh? Damn. I feel like he's toying with you or testing you. That's true. Mm. 
Damn, he said you're weak. He should be. Because I don't think he really wants to kill you either. He's already shown that he can move faster than you could possibly respond. He doesn't want to kill you. But you don't want to. Because y'all are bonding. That's also true. And remember, she wasn't trying to kill you. <laughs> he blushes again. Okay, she set her boundaries. I like it. She's stronger than she looks. Mm. Finally feeling things. Mm -hmm. Pity. Ooh. Once again, he hesitated. He could have killed her. It's not weakness. Don't listen to whoever that man was who killed your parents. Don't listen to this man even though he's the closest thing to a father you had. I know, it's hard. Ooh. The shift in the eyes. That was cool. Here comes the hollow. Can you at least- No! Who can do that? <laughs> you do have emotion. No. That's a title. But is that who you are? Oh, I love that imagery of that monster who raised him. Yeah, but can you go back to your wife with no emotions? Mm-hmm. That's who you need to embrace you. Get yes, that dead thing off you. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now we're seeing the mutual bonding. It's not weakness, my friend, it isn't. Exactly. She did nothing to deserve death at this point. Who said that before? That's right! That's why you think of her wife when you think of her. It takes way more courage to face up to your emotions and avoid them. Would you? Mm, okay, let's pretend. I like that. She's like, I'm supporting you, bro. Yeah. She's like, please. Justify all the things that I've had to do, too. Oh, I like this moment. They're mirroring each other. They're seeing each other. while well, she's seeing herself in him. Nope. You haven't been for a long time. I was gonna say, kind of looks like what you'd see in, like, Thailand or those areas, like, South Asia. Not Japan. But then again, I've never been to Japan, so I don't know what kind of stuff they have. Uh-oh. Ah! No! Wow, that was extra, but probably necessary. That is creepy as hell. Let's go, let's, oh, not fingers. Ew. No, for real, who thinks of this stuff? Who really thinks of this stuff? And also butterflies don't sting. Oh, you're getting off on that. Great. Maybe y'all should get out of the butterfly area. What am I watching? Fish? Yeah. Well, maybe... She okay, you're right. I was going to say, maybe she could help, but she... No. And that's how you choose to end. Okay, so wow, we went from zero to a hundred real quick. She, it's gonna be that kind of show. It's gonna be that kind of show, guys. Okay, well that was episode three of Hell's Paradise and Wowzers. Okay, 
So we started off the episode with our boy being challenged by one of the other prisoners, which again, I knew there was going to be a lot of this, not a lot, but a good amount of it through the season, right? And he was against this guy. I don't think it was a guy with superpowers, but yeah, some guy with a weird perversion towards weaponry. And he thought, you know, actually he wasn't raw. Like his theory, his, his logic actually wasn't that crazy around the fact that we should hurry up. I should eliminate my opponent so that I have more time to search for this elixir and come back. Um, but also he was just crazy and he wanted to have the, you know, bragging rights of saying he took out the baddest killer in the whole group. But that fight was very interesting because <laughs> again, it's showing you how insane Gabi Maru is because he literally took a, what do they call those things? A morning star, but like on acid to the face, like just to the face should have killed him. His head should have been splattered. But my guy was like, no, nah, just a look at my neck, you know, well, well, crick there. I'm get like what? Meanwhile, him dealing with these damn hand ties <laughs> that Sagiri refuses to let him take off. But anyways, that fight really wasn't the point outside of a course showing that once again, he is extraordinarily creative with how to take people out, right? He had his hands tied and he was not, of course, we know that he can harden his body so that he was able to resist the weapons, but using his feet uh, to kick things, you know, kick weapons back and do everything. Like we didn't actually get to see the full battle, but we didn't need to, right? We're to the point now where these battles are definitely going to need to be elevated, but also we need to conserve some of that, some of that energy. But I feel like the whole point of that situation, obviously, is because we were introduced as well to the Isaman that was with him. I think I'm saying that right. I might be mispronouncing it, but this is where we got more information. Basically, we found out the fact that Sagiri is at the bottom of her rank, which I feel like is A, like I said, because the guy who got eaten was saying that she's too emotional for the job. But also, I think I think her gender has a lot to do with it as well, because we're seeing, you know, Japan still is, but was much more misogynistic back in the day. So they don't feel like she belongs there. But also, they say you're so rigid, like you don't look at the bigger picture. You're so, uh, what did he say? Like, you, you'd rather follow the rules and fail than be flexible with the rules and win. And that doesn't always make sense. And so there's some truth in that, right? Like rules are there for a reason. And I understand that some people absolutely need them. But in this world where they're dealing with criminals who are not following the rules and are not going to do things linearly, she's going to have to learn to move and bend a bit and be a little bit, you know, gray, right? Things can't be black and white here. She's going to have to dance in the gray a bit, especially on this mission. So yes, that whole fight kind of brought that out. And it also brought up the fact that there is more drama, some political drama happening around this excursion as well. Basically, they're looking at potentially replacing the head of the clan as well as possibly getting getting, um, I believe they said also someone else to replace the Shogun. So everyone, if you know anything about this period in Japanese history, it was very volatile from what we know anyways, because they were shut off in the world during this time, but it was very volatile. Lots of overturning of their, of their leaders and lots of infighting. So anyway, he's basically saying even us as, as swordsmen, as this Aesaman, we need to be watching our backs because there's people coming to basically make sure that none of us or some of the higher ups of us don't have the room to succeed to be the next leader either. So this is why you need to kind of loosen up and figure out what you need to do and possibly, you know, forge some temporary alliances if you need to, because we're going to need to survive in all costs, right? So he's like, his guy died. So he's like, yeah, that's not exactly what I planned on, but hey, if I can get out of here quick and, you know, figure out how to position myself with this whole political mess, then I'll take that. But just a little FYI to you. So thank you for all that exposition, sir. We got a lot of information. Also love the part two where he was like, oh, I should take out your candidate for you. And the way that Gabi Maru showed up before he even blinked, it was like, let's not even pull out your sword, please. <laughs> like, dude, no. If, if you come at me, I'm going to have to do what I have to do and I don't want to have to do it, okay? So let's just put that back in the sheet. That was really cool. But I, I really like Gabi Maru's character so far. I like the fact that he's a little bit goofy, a little bit droll, a little bit innocent, but also kind of darkly wise at the same time. So he's turning out to be very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that we're learning more and more about him. And then we saw that he and Sagiri ended up having their battle because once he heard this new information, he felt, okay, if I got to deal with a third party coming in that I have to deal with now, so I'm not just worried about these other swordsmen and these other, um, sorry, these swordsmen, the other inmates now, and also whatever this island's got to bring. Now you're telling me you're going to bring in some other guys who are coming to take out the swordsmen. I've got less time and too many distractions. 
So in his mind, he thought by taking Sigiri out because he knows that she is not anywhere near the fighter that he is. I shouldn't say that. He believes that. And at this point, she's not. But I also feel like her conscience is holding her back from a lot. But I digress. He feels like she's going to be a hindrance and that it, the, say, the kindest thing he can do to her is kill her. And again, he doesn't want to take her out. He doesn't want to do that. But his mind, he knows that if she goes back alone, she's going to end up facing the ultimate consequence because she was supposed to keep her eye on her charge. And he also thinks that there's too many things on this island that could also possibly get to her. So he's thinking the kindest thing I can do for her is take her out quick, silent, painless, and then go on this thing on my own. But again, he forgets that to take, but he, remember she said like, you can't, you can't do that because you're not going to win. But he's like, at this point, I just want to get off this island and get to my wife. So I don't even know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the lesser of the evils. But anyways, so that of course kicks off a battle between the two of them. But I noticed right off the bat that the fact that she's alive after a few seconds, I'm like, okay, he's not dead ass. He, he thinks he is, but I like that halfway through, he finally came to the conclusion that I don't really want to do this because I can, I could finish her in a blow. And I'm still clacking swords with her when I got better things to do. And bless her heart. She's, and I love that they both are repeating the mantras that they're trying to believe, you know, trying to convince themselves of as this fight's going on. You know, she's saying he's a heartless monster. He's terrible. I, I, I don't know what I thought. He, this is what he really is. Because deep down, she knows that's not true. She knows that she's seen sides to him already that prove He's not just this monster that everyone thinks he is. Conversely, he's trying to say the same thing that has been drilled into his head quite literally since he was a baby, which is emotions are bad. Connections are bad. Love is weakness. You have to be hollow. It's the only way you're going to be strong. And he's trying to tell himself, yeah, I don't have emotions. I don't care. But clearly he does. Like he already admitted he has emotions for his wife. So that doesn't just extend to one person, right? It goes like once you start opening up that blockage, which again, he never lost them. Let's be real. He never lost them. But through his very horrible upbringing and training, he learned to detach himself from them. But now, you know, his wife helped him to slowly start reconnecting those emotions and it's starting to grow. And of course, they've, they've been repressed for a long time. So they're eager to get out and, and actually do their thing. And I love how he talks about how her just opening himself up a little bit to, to caring about his wife and, and feeling the love for her, it opened the spectrum, right? He thought he'd just feel the love for her, but no, then he started to feel anger. Like he said, he wanted revenge. He wanted, uh, he felt guilt. He felt, uh, what was the other thing he said? Like, uh, he, just he, the whole spectrum, right? All of it's coming out now. And that's why in the end we saw he wasn't actually able to pull the trigger when it came to Sigiri because he knew like this is not the right situation. If she was actually trying to hurt him, he could justify it. But now he knows that she didn't deserve it. She didn't do anything but her job. She's just this girl who actually reminds him a lot of someone he thought he cares about so in the end he couldn't do it but i really love that she ended up reiterating the line that his wife has told him which is that the strongest thing you can do is face up to your emotions and i love the imagery they showed of almost the devil and the angel on his shoulder with whoever that guy was who raised him who took out his parents trying to whisper that hatred into him and i love how they showed up his eyes shifted when he was trying to listen to that voice versus his wife coming in and kind of pushing that imagery away and being like, no, you're not that person anymore. You haven't been that person for a long time. I will take you back. I will love you as long as you follow your emotions. And then him being able to like, again, kind of being frozen in that moment while he listened to that. So really good imagery in this show. I got to say, uh, not just even the, just the animation, but just how they're showing how Gabi Maru is working through this evolution, I guess you can say, of his character. And we're learning a little bit more of how Sekiri's like also going to be evolving through this as well because i feel like she's quote unquote weak right now but mostly because she's trying to figure out who it is she wants to be but i think that gabi maru is going to help her figure that out like they're going to actually help each other i should say figure that out and that she's going to become a lot stronger and a lot crazier than people expect of her as she goes through that so i'm looking forward to seeing how that goes and um yeah we also see that the man-eating giant we now know is a man-eating giant is on the loose. He no longer has a, uh, he doesn't have uh, a watchman anymore. He literally ate him. So we'll see where he, where he ends up because he doesn't seem to talk much. So he's, uh, I think they're building him up to be something at this point because we've seen him a few times. And at this point we've seen that he's clearly incredibly strong and also uh, a cannibal. So we'll see what we can do with that information later in the season. But I feel like that's going to be a, an obstacle, whether it's for Gabi Maru or something else very soon. So yeah, great episode again, solid episode. I love this show. It definitely keeps you 
really wanting to see what the next step is or where the next thing is going to go. This island is weird and like I love that they're putting in the layers of the politics as well. This is gonna be good. I'm enjoying it a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next video.